I do not condone any of the actions in this story. If you feel this may be happening to you, or you are being gaslit to think this abuse is normal, please reach out to me or the comments. No matter what life throws at you, abuse is not okay. Mental health is important. Be sure to look out for each other. Creepypastas are internet folklore. It is up to you to decide fact or fiction. I do these for entertainment purposes only. Watch at your own discretion. They don't want me to win. If they wanted me to win, they wouldn't have fired me. If they wanted me to win, they wouldn't have sent me back out on the streets. They wouldn't have taken away my girlfriend. And they wouldn't have taken away my fucking job. Now, I have nothing. Nothing. And then Alicia dumped me after I told her I lost my job. And then she came over to collect her things, told me that she didn't want my grubby hands all over her cat and her clothes, and the framed pictures of all the memories that we had made together. She wanted all of it. She wanted all that shit for herself, but I didn't want to let her have it. I'm entitled to half of the things that we've made together, right? That's half of my shit. I'm entitled to every single laugh, every single smile, every single kiss, every single fuck. Those memories are mine, just as much hers. So I wouldn't let her have it. We fought. We fought over a picture of us standing in front of a Ferris wheel down in Macy Park when the carnival came two years ago. I'll never forget that little trip we had. That was where she told me she loved me, right after we took the picture. I had some geezer take the picture for us. Some old man with black glasses and gray hair slicked back towards the back of his neck. He had on some kind of purple and gray sweater, black slacks, and dirty sneakers. I don't know why I remember that so much. Maybe it was because of the way he looked at us after he had taken the picture. As if he was wishing that he was me. If only he had known how much pain and emotional suffering he'd been going through if that were the case. I'll bet he wouldn't want to be me right now. Not as I'm driving down the highway with Alicia in my fucking trunk. I gave her a broken eye. I know it's broken because it started swelling right after I hit her. I, I didn't want to do it. I, I didn't want to hit her. But she got so loud with me. She started calling me names, started clawing at my face as I tried to yank that picture out of her hand. I yanked it so hard that she fell forward and smacked her head on my knee. I didn't knee her. Not on purpose. I only hit her once across the face with my hand, and nothing else. But... Then I... I had to hit her again. And again. She wasn't gonna let me stop. Knocked her out not long afterwards by sending a lamp to the back of her skull. Didn't touch her face. Just one shattered lamp to the dome piece, and that's all she wrote. She's not dead, though. I know she's not. I can hear her bumping around in the trunk back there, trying to put a dent in the ass of my little Acura. It's not going to work. I don't know what I'm going to do with her yet, but it's not like I have anything to lose. The job was all I had. She was all I had. I have no family, no friends, no nothing. I needed that job to fund my second life. I needed that job to help me get to where I wanted to get, but now it's all gone. Shattered. All of those dreams that I had just pissed down the drain. I was going to take her with me. I was going to take you with me. We were going to go straight to the top. Doesn't matter that you had a coke problem. Doesn't matter that you liked to party more than a politician on his birthday in Russia. I was going to give you everything, Alicia. Everything. But then they fucked it up. And you fucked it up by abandoning me by giving up on me when everything started crashing down. All you had to do was tell me that it was going to be okay. That we'd be able to work it out together. That we'd be able to fix everything. And that the sun was still going to shine on us. That not all was lost. But you couldn't do that. Now how can I be with a woman like that? How could I ever be with a woman who wasn't going to stand by my side? behind every great man is a fantastic woman. Isn't that right? I haven't decided what I'm going to do to her yet. 
I was thinking that I'd just drive the car out into the ocean, climb out before it sank, leaving her to suffocate in the trunk, all alone, like she was going to leave me. An eye for an eye, right? Or maybe I'd just take her out into the countryside somewhere and put two bullets in her head. I brought the pistol. The one she bought me for my birthday. The one that feels like a lifetime ago. Why does life do this to people like me? Why does life end up feeling like it's uncontrollable sometimes? That no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you work, it's all for nothing. I ask myself that sometimes. I ask myself that sometimes in the past. Why am I working so hard? Why am I working so hard? Just to get nothing out of it? But I stuck it through. I stuck it through with that job. For us. For me and you, Alicia. And then they let me go. Then you let me go. Then my dreams let me go. And just like that, life feels like it really does have no meaning anymore. The highway's not too busy, which is funny because it feels like I'm driving down some endless road as if I'm going nowhere. But I'll get somewhere eventually. If it's not the ocean, if it's not the countryside, then maybe it'll be somewhere in the woods, tucked away behind some tree somewhere. I'll just turn off the car, pull that pistol out of my glove compartment, and mosey on back to the trunk. Maybe I won't even open it before I shoot you, Alicia. Maybe I'll just shoot you right through the meadow before I take myself out after listening to the birds. Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe that's what the whole fucked up journey called life was leading me towards. And if that's really the case, then I guess I just don't really want to live at all anymore. I just don't want to live at all. Thank you for listening to Pointless, written by Julio Cesar Miranda. I do not condone any of the actions in this story. If you feel this may be happening to you, or you are being gaslit to think this abuse is normal, Please, reach out to me or the comments. No matter what life throws at you, abuse is not okay. Mental health is important. Be sure to look out for each other. Creepypastas are internet folklore. It is up to you to decide fact or fiction. I do these for entertainment purposes only. Watch at your own discretion. I just want to take this time to say thank you for all the support so far. 130 plus new subs overnight. I am bamboozled, to be honest. I hope you all enjoy. If you would like more, please like, hit the bell, subscribe, and please share. Share with other creepypasta friends. Post wherever you feel comfortable. As long as you guys enjoy this genre, expect much more besides pastas, like Ghost Hunter episodes, and much more. I can promise, as long as just one of you enjoys these stories and keeps sharing, I will not stop uploading. I stream full-time as my job every day on Twitch links are in the description. But if this video gets enough love, I will attempt live streaming on YouTube tomorrow, July 5th, 2022. If you like creepypastas and want to suggest more, leave them in the comments. I will read them, narrate, and upload them. So if you enjoy the short story or creepypasta world, be sure to subscribe and turn the bell on. I will be looking for all kinds of creepy stories to tell. I need your help with more stories and ideas to do. I need your support to continue this journey. But hey, this is Creepy Sauce, and I'm on to the next pasta.